Hi, it's Dr. Gemma, and I'm back with strategies about sleep. Although if you hear um, Christmas songs in the background, you'll know what time of year it is. And this is part four. I'm looking at my notes of my um, how to get to, how to have good habits to support good sleep. Please remember that there's also a separate strategies uh, video that talks about if you're trying to get to sleep right now, what do you do? But that's not what I'm talking about now. What I'm talking about in this one, this is the fourth one in a series of what kind of habits do you need to form to support good sleep? Okay, so this one is mostly about, I think, the, the bedroom. <laughs> and this is the, the last, but certainly not the least, of this list. Because if you're going to have good sleep, you have to have a good place to sleep. And if you're trying to sleep in a place that isn't comfortable, good luck with that. Um, so... Before we go anywhere else, what I would say is that you have to make the place where you sleep into a very nice nest. And that means that you need nice bedding, you need it quiet, you need it dim, and you need it comfortable. You shouldn't have to fight to fall asleep. That has a lot of little uh, attached ideas. For example, uh, if you have a television in your bedroom, my first suggestion if you have sleep problems is get the television out of your bedroom because... It's just bad for sleep in every possible way. It's going to distract you in all the wrong ways. The light from the monitor is going to be um, developed such that it is intended to keep you awake, not put you to sleep, since most TV monitors can double as computer monitors. They're supposed to help you stay awake at work. I have a small cat on the floor here trying to in, uh, incite a game with me, trying to get me to throw her plastic toy to play fetch. You see me somewhat distracted. Okay, so... You know, the TV monitor should not be in your bedroom. If you're not going to listen to Kindly Dr. Gemma, or if you are living in like a studio apartment and it's unavoidable to have it in your bedroom or your bedroom doubles as your home office, yeah, okay. Then you want to cover that puppy with basically a blackout curtain. You want to make sure that your monitor is deeply and strongly covered at night so that it's not keeping you awake accidentally. All monitors these days, as long as they're plugged in, they are on. That is to say, it may not be turned on, but it's running a small amount of current in it that enables it to turn on quickly and turn off quickly. So all monitors have current running in them, and that current is going to help to keep you awake. So please, if there's anything in your bedroom, you need to cover that, okay? I do believe in nice bedding. I do believe that it's worth going out and really investing in your bed clothes, okay? And this may take you a couple weeks, if not months in my case, but I think it's important to have nice flannel sheets for the winter if you can manage it, and your spring summer sheets should be like a cotton. Don't have polyester, they're only gonna make you sweat. If there's any reason that you have a plastic cover on your mattress, uh, polyester's gonna make that about 40 times worse. Polyester just does not breathe. It's a lovely washable synthetic, but it's not great in your bed, okay? So you want organic natural fibers in your bed if you can manage it. If you like pillows, lots of them. Uh, again, pillow covers don't just get hard, you know, sort of upholstery type things. Get something you can sleep on and that are comfortable. If you have a habit of sleeping in your living room, my next question would be why? But again, if you're sleeping anywhere else around the house, uh, as often happens when there are small kids in the house, again, you got to make sure that sleep space is comfortable. So if mom's in bed with the newborn and dad decides to sleep on the couch, please help dad out. Let's not make dad's life harder. Give him some nice bedding wherever you've stowed them in the house, okay? Next is your bedroom should be quiet. That's really hard to achieve and that's going to lead to number three here. But you wanna make your bedroom as quiet as you can make it. Uh, if you need to change bedrooms so that you're further away from the kids or you need to move the kids to a bedroom, this happens a lot when your kid is entering toddlerhood that you don't need them right on top of you anymore. They're not feeding through the night. so. Yeah, if you need to move people's bedrooms, fine. You have to consider what is worth it to you. Getting up and moving through the house at night if your kid's in a more distant bedroom or keeping them close but being awakened by them. Your room needs to be dim. Light is the perpetual enemy of sleep. It's very, very hard to sleep when you're being triggered. And daylight frequencies, of course, are meant to wake us up. We are diurnal animals, that is daylight animals. So you've got to try and make your room dim. Finally, comfortable. And when I say comfortable, I mean things like clean, accessible. 
If you have junk all over the floor and you can't get across your room at night and you're tripping over things on the way to the bathroom, your room is now a safety hazard, that's not going to help your sleep. You have to know that if you get up in the middle of the night, you can reach things. So you need to arrange your bedroom. You need to make sure your floor is clean, that you can have a clear path to the restroom or anywhere else you might be going, like the kids' room, the doorway. You want to make sure that you've got bed stands or, or tables in reach with all your bed stand stuff on them, like I need a place for my glasses every night. Um, I would recommend your phone not be in your bedroom, that your cell phone actually has been shown. Uh, there's a, a beautiful experiment done by two girls who were at the time, I think in eighth grade, where they demonstrated that charging a cell phone in the room kills plants in the room. Um, you know, the, the suggestion there is that it's not healthy to have a cell phone, let alone a charging cell phone, anywhere near you when you can help it. Um, so and there are the lawsuits about people who claim they got cancer from the cell phone being next to the part of their body that got cancer. I can't speak to that medically, but all I would say is there's some very strong evidence suggesting you shouldn't have your cell phone near you, let alone when you're passively sleeping for an eight hour stretch. So again, part of the comfort is getting the screens out of the room, including your phone. Okay. If you can arrange a system where your phone signals you, for example, I have an iPad. Well, if my phone rings in a different room, my iPad in my room will ring. Is it good to have the iPad in the room? Well, it has a cover uh, that has to block some of the radiation. I can turn it off. I can um, put it on do not disturb and it can ring for me and I can put it across the room for me. So you might look at ways to substitute for your cell phone if you have to. Okay, step number two, and this goes back to having a dim room, blackout curtains in your room. If you have uh, wooden shades or anything like that, cover them. Black out curtains in your room. You want your room to be dark. You want it to signal restfulness. Your brain interprets darkness as an invitation to sleep. Black out curtains in the room. I don't mean thick curtains. I mean you get the ones that are called blackout curtains that have heavy liners, okay? In the summer, you'll figure out what to do about that. But after all, they, that is good insulation. So it will also improve the warmth and coolness of your house if you have good, heavily insulated blackout curtains. At bedtime, and all night long if you're me, you can play white noise. White noise is an amazing thing. You can use a, a fan. If you have a ceiling fan in your room, that will do it. If you put a fan on the floor, or if you have a space heater that you think is safe enough to leave on all night, that will do it. That will give you white noise. I happen to like ocean waves. I turn on, I have, um, where I do this? I actually have Alexa, and so I will, I didn't hear a bloop, that's good. I will tell Alexa to play white noise, and she'll play, and I'll say ocean noise. You can play babbling brooks, you can play fountains. I avoid uh, water running like fountains or brooks because that makes me need to pee. Ocean waves don't seem to do that. There's also crackling fires. There are a lot of ways around this. Um, Pluto TV, which is free television, but very mixed bag does have Yule Logs. You can put on the Yule Log on Pluto TV, which is free, a free app on your whatever, on whatever tablet you're using. You can crank up the Yule Log and hear the sound of crackling flames. There's a lot of ways to achieve white noise. If you live in the city or anywhere where you're by a road and you hear cars all night, the white noise is really, really going to be important because you're going to hear screeching tires and people yelling and all sorts of things. So please go for the white noise. Okay, so then your bedding, warm, soft, and heavy. People sleep better under heavy bedding. You've heard about the weighted blankets that have become the rage uh, this year and last year. Uh, sorry, trying not to sneeze. Um, there's a belief that people with autism and people with anxiety do better under weighted blankets. And this goes back to heavy bedding. We've all had that experience where you go to sleep in cold weather and you get under a big, soft, comfy, heavy duvet or comforter. And it makes you feel so snug and comfortable. Yeah, that feeling is really good. And so you want to encourage that. So please, your bedding should be consistently warm, soft, and heavy. If you're sleeping under some rather hard woven blanket, no, stop that. Put something closer to you that is soft and comfortable. Finally, you want to keep the room cool. The rule of thumb is cool room, warm bedding. If the room is too hot, you won't sleep. If the room is cool, you will. And here's the bonus points. We talked before about having a hot bath or a hot shower before bed, because then when you get out of the shower, your temperature will drop really quickly and that will signal sleep, your body temperature. This does the same effect. If the room is cool 
and you have warm, soft, heavy bedding, what will happen is as you warm up during the night, you'll stick a hand or a foot out of the covers. It will make your body temperature drop. That will help you to go back to sleep. So you want to work on keeping your room tolerably cool. What does that mean? It varies a lot. We keep our house at 62 at night here in Southern California. Uh, in the summer with the air conditioner, we keep it considerably warmer. I think we have it at 74. But in the winter, we keep it at 62. And yes, it is much easier to go out and yeah, spend a lot on a, on a comforter or a blanket, like $150 if you're talking queen or king size bed. You do that once, you save for it, and you get a good high quality, high thread count, heavy comforter or duvet down if you can tolerate it. I can't, so you know, synthetic down if you must, it's me. Okay, but you wanna invest in that, and you want a good one. You want one that's gonna last you for years. Now that sounds expensive, but when you chalk it up to think how much we're saving when we keep the heat at 62 at night, every night during, you know, 90, 120 days of winter. And yes, even though I'm in Southern California, I live in the desert and I live at high altitude. So we get snow. Uh, so we do get cold up here. I live in a four season environment up here. So I do know what I'm talking about. I'm also from Philly and Southeast Washington state. So I've been in the cold, okay? This is a consistently useful strategy no matter where you live. Cool room, warm bedding, high quality, good warm bedding. Okay, so what have I really said? Now this is the end of this. We're all getting tired of me talking about sleep, I know. Fortunately, it's broken into four segments. You may notice if you followed through these four segments about how to have good sleep habits. Number one, there's a lot of overlap with how do I fall asleep when I'm tired and I can't get to sleep. Things like the hot shower, the warm bedding, and the cool room um, you know, those overlap into, even if you're tired tonight, you've never done it before, you can try it. You know, heap on some extra blankets, things like that. Okay. The other thing you should realize is I'm really talking about habits that you maintain all day long and all year long. So I'm talking about in general, you get up at the same time every day. You eat, you know, if you eat breakfast, you do that. You exercise early in the day. This should be a normal part of your everyday routine, okay? You're going to stop caffeine at 12 noon, you're going to turn off all the screens at night. You're not gonna eat for three hours before you go to bed. You're gonna eat a little more lightly at night. You're not gonna drink as much before you go to bed. Uh, you may take that shower or crawl into the warm bed at the same time every night with the heavy sheets, making sure your thermostat is turned down. Okay, these are year long habits. Some of these are actually investments. When I talk about keeping the room cool, you know and I know, you should probably consider if you can, if you're not in an apartment, if you own your home, saving up to get a thermostat that is programmable. Because again, that's an investment you make once, it lasts for years, but once you program it, you no longer have to worry. Your whole home will support you getting good sleep by turning down its temperature at night. One of the ways we know in my family that it's time to go to bed is that the house suddenly cools off. We realize the thermostat's gone down, it's bedtime, okay? So some of these are investments that you can make and are one-time investments so I know it sounds expensive, and I'm sorry to sound kind of wealthy and privileged, but it is worth, if you want to have a good life and you want a healthy sleep, it is worth saving up for these things as much as you can and trying to invest in high quality products like an adjustable programmable thermostat um, or really good bedding or you know some form of good white noise, even if it's buying Amazon Prime for a year, which has gotten outrageously expensive, but still, that's where I get my white noise every night. So you want to try to save up and work on these things because good sleep is actually a long-term project. It's not a one-shot deal that you can fix real easily and quickly, okay? So there you go. That's my series on habits that you need to support good sleep. I hope this has been helpful. Everybody stay safe, take care of each other, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.